So this question says, if P is a negative number and S is greater than P and S is less than the absolute value of P, right? So another way to read this, by the way, is that S is between zero and the absolute value of P, which of the following must also be a negative number? So this is a perfect opportunity to use a strategy I call plug in your own number. Right, so we're going to make up a number for s. So all we know for sure is that s has to be greater than 0. So we're going to say, I'm going to say s is equal to 2, right, because 2 is greater than 0. And then we know that s is less than the absolute value of p. Now the fact that there's an absolute value there, I'm going to actually make p a negative number. So let's call it, let's call it just negative 3, okay, because then that makes this still true, right? So s or 2 is still less than the absolute value of negative three because the absolute value of negative three would be positive three. So then, you know, when it says must be, I am paying very close attention to that, which means I'm gonna try each of these answers because if I have multiple correct answers, then maybe I'll need to change my, my numbers around a little bit. Um, first of all, there's no way this is the right answer because no matter what goes on inside the parentheses, if I square it, right, no matter if the number inside parentheses ends up being positive or negative, once I square it, it's going to become positive, right? So the same thing here, no matter what happens with P minus S, once I square it, it's positive. Same thing here, right? So this is how we can get to answers very quickly by understanding these math rules, right? So all the first three answers cannot be negative ever. So let's look at uh, the fourth option here, p squared, p squared uh, would be positive 9, and then minus 2, so this would be 9, minus 2 squared, which is 4, so that's going to be positive. So that feels like a no, right, because we want, we want a negative number. And then for the last option, s squared, which is 4, minus p squared, which is 9, that does give me a negative number. And that should always be the case because p will always be, or absolute value of P, will always be greater than S, right? So when I square it, that squared number will always be greater than S squared. So then if I subtract a larger number from a smaller number, right, my answer will always be negative, and therefore this is the correct answer here.